We frequently hear about players who had a rough childhood, sometimes growing up with just a single mother with no money whatsoever. Other times, maybe they get caught up in criminal activity, through drugs or gangs that seriously endanger themselves and their friends. However, it's not too often we hear about players who literally had to escape from a country in the middle of a war, where their entire families were at risk of losing their lives. But all it took was some hard work and a lot of luck to get out. In this video, we're going to take a look at six players who escaped from war-torn countries and eventually finding their way into the NBA. How's it going folks? My name's Andy, and without further ado, let's get started. Number 6, Thon Maker. While most of us know Thon Maker as the guy who had so much hype coming into the NBA and yet not living up to it, he had an incredibly hard journey growing up. Born in an area that's now known as South Sudan, Thon was born in the midst of the Second Sudanese War, a conflict that lasted for over 20 years with millions of civilian casualties, mainly through starvation. His parents were illiterate as they grew up in a small village with very little access to education. But for Thon, he was fortunate enough to have an uncle who worked in the local administration and he organized an effort for him, his brother, and his aunt to escape the civil war and send them to Uganda. Thon would have a new life in Uganda until he got discovered by a recruiter who noticed his exceptional physical prowess. Thon was always a tall, athletic guy, but he didn't have a huge interest in basketball until he got noticed. The recruiter was named Edward Smith, an Australian guy who helped multiple Sudanese refugees before. And Thon was the next guy that Smith wanted to help move to Australia and develop a basketball career. Smith let his family know that Thon would be well taken care of, and reluctantly, Thon's family agreed. At the age of 14, Thon was sent to Sydney, Australia, and eventually to the US, with the goal of developing his basketball skills. Honestly, while it's nice that he had someone help him escape a civil war, the ultimate goal of his agent was to profit from his athletic ability. The large majority of people never escape those terrible conditions, and it's just one in a million who display the potential to play a sport to get out of there and start a new life. Regardless, he became a high school sensation and his draft stock skyrocketed. By 2016, he became a highly sought after prospect, eventually getting drafted by the Bucks with the number 10 pick. It didn't work out, unfortunately, and I don't see his career ever panning out. But he still transformed his life from rags to riches, and now his entire family is set for the future. So when you look at it from a broader perspective, he did succeed. Number 5, Serge Ibaka. A reporter once asked him a question, why do you pray before every game? Ibaka responded, it's very important because some people don't have life. I have a free life and so I just give thanks. I have come a long way. It's not an extraordinary quote or anything, but it's something many people take for granted. Ibaka never took his success in the NBA for granted, like many others, as he knows what it's like to live at the absolute bottom. Ibaka was born in Brazzaville, the capital of the Republic of Congo, as the youngest of 18 children. He actually grew up loving to play basketball, as both of his parents were former basketball players, so they inspired him a lot, especially when he started growing taller and taller. Playing basketball in the courts of Brazzaville, there were many obstacles. It was stated, The courts were creased with cracks and backboards were made of wood. Kids who had sneakers rather than the widespread plastic shoes remedied holes in the soles with cardboard inserts. This did not bother anyone though, as Ibaka recalled, I played every day. If there was a day I couldn't play, I felt so bad, like something was missing that day. It was something that we loved so much so we didn't care about how we did it as long as we could play the game. However, at the age of 8, Ibaka's mother died of natural causes. At the age of 9, civil conflict swept through the country, as the Second Congo War commenced in 1998. This war was devastating, as it involved several African countries, with estimates of over 5 million deaths. In 2002, his father was captured and imprisoned just for being a citizen of Congo. Through all of this, Ibaka kept his head down and continued to hone his skills in basketball and soon, he'd get discovered by local talent scouts in the area. 
This was his big break. He got the opportunity to move to Spain by himself to escape the conflict. That's where his career quickly progressed, as everyone started to notice him, especially when he won the MVP of the Reebok Eurocamp. This moment caught everyone's attention and catapulted him into the NBA conversation. He would eventually be a first-round pick in 2008. Number 4. Luol Deng Another victim of the Second Sudanese War, also from the same city as Thon Maker, Luol Deng was a member of the Dinka tribe, an ethnic group that produces some of the tallest people in the entire world. Unfortunately, Deng doesn't remember much about his time in Sudan. He stated, I don't remember anything about my homeland. I had to leave there with my mother and eight brothers and sisters when I was only three years old. The good news is, his father was a government minister for the Sudanese parliament, so he had the privilege of moving Luol and his mother out of the country. If they would arrive in Egypt in 1988, and his whole family would be crammed into a tiny apartment. For Luol, he went many nights without sleep, worrying about his father, who was still stuck in Sudan. If he was even still alive at that point, maybe he was killed. But thankfully, he wasn't, and they would meet up together once again. In the meantime, Luol's family struggled to get by in Egypt, but he was soon offered political asylum in the UK, where he made himself known. He quickly rose up the ranks, becoming one of the greatest basketball players in the history of Britain. When he moved to the States, he excelled in the high school scene, and was recognized as the second best high school senior in the country, right behind LeBron James. Believe it or not, Dang drew a lot of comparisons to LeBron during high school. And after LeBron got drafted, it was Dang who was considered as the next guy in line. While he didn't live up to being on the same level as Bron, Dang still had a very successful NBA career. Number 3. Yusuf Nurkic In 2019, Nurkic drew some controversy for wearing this shirt. What is it? Well, on the shirt displayed the names of nine Bosnian soldiers who were killed in the 1990s during the Balkan Wars. While these soldiers are considered as heroes in Bosnia, they were also considered as war criminals by other Balkans, as they were allegedly involved in the murder of a lot of civilians. Born in 1994, it was smack dab in the middle of the Bosnian War, a conflict that saw over 100,000 deaths, most of which were Bosniaks. Now, in this video so far, I've said numerous times how players escaped their war-torn country because they got straight up lucky that they were discovered by basketball scouts. For Nurkic, it was actually strange how he got discovered. Well, it was actually his father, Hariz Nurkic, who got discovered. He was a 7-foot-tall, 400-pound policeman who made headlines in Bosnia after getting involved in a fistfight against 14 other people, and <laughs> he beat them. A sports agent was in Bosnia at the time, and he noticed the headlines, so he contacted Hariz, and the first question he asked was, Do you have a son? The rest is history. Number 2. Mirza Toledovic We're sticking to the same country here, except Toledovic experienced things that were so much more grim. Unlike Nurkic, Toledovic was a young 7-year-old when the Bosnian War started, and he witnessed things he would never forget. He grew up in Mostar and saw his hometown go under an 18-month siege. Toledovic described these events in detail. I was 7 years old when the war started. First, you start seeing that there's no food. Then, grenades come down. The whole city is shaking, and you hear people screaming. Every day, your parents come in and say, Our neighbor died. Our cousin died. Always somebody dying. One day, I asked my mother, Is anybody alive? It was very, very rough for us. Despite the adversity, Toledovic focused solely on basketball and spent many days playing at the nearby gyms, upwards of 12 hours a day. At times, he was afraid to even leave the gym because he heard so many gunshots outside, so many grenades were being blown up right near his neighborhood. Over the years, the fighting cooled down, and Toledovic traveled to other European countries, like Belgium and Spain, to play professionally. He was in a great spot in the EuroLeague, but he still strived to play in the NBA, despite going undrafted in 2007. Soon, he got his chance. In 2012, the Brooklyn Nets picked him up, 
But after six seasons in the NBA, he discovered he had an artery blockage in both of his lungs, a seriously life-threatening condition that forced him to retire. Nevertheless, the fact that he came from a small town that literally got sieged during a war to making his dream come true, that's all he ever wanted. Even with that devastating lung condition, he's not afraid of it after all he's been through. And number one, DJ Banga. Daku. You might recognize him as one of the earliest NBA memes, or his role as a bench warmer on those Lakers teams that won a championship in 2009 and 2010. But did you know that he literally never saw a basketball until the age of 19? Benga was born and raised in Zaire, also known as the Democratic Republic of the Congo. His father worked for the government, which unfortunately made Benga's entire family a target. Because after his father's term was over, the new government that took over hunted down everyone who worked for the previous administration. That included Benga's father. Shortly after the new regime took power, Benga's father mysteriously disappeared. It was speculated he got assassinated. To make matters worse, a war broke out between two tribes, the Tutsis and the Hutus. This conflict between the two extended to other African nations as well. Benga was falsely accused of being a Tutsi, and thus thrown into jail, awaiting his execution. Fortunately, his brother bribed a prison guard to let him out. I mean, that's, that's pretty freaking crazy. Immediately after, Benga and his family fled to Belgium, where they were granted refugee status. It was there where he discovered basketball while roaming the streets, watching other teenagers play. When Benga started playing, he was noticed by a man named Willy Stevenier, a former Belgian basketball player and coach, and soon Willy brought DJ under his wing. DJ gave him credit as the guy who saved his life. After a short stint in the Belgian Pro Leagues, Benga found his way to the NBA. Participating in the Summer Leagues, signing multiple short contracts, and became the biggest cheerleader the Lakers could have hoped for. That's all folks, those were 6 NBA players who escaped from war-torn countries. Not all of them had an all-star caliber career, but the fact that they were able to make it out was a success in itself. Most people don't. We only hear of the success stories, but not the millions of people who could not make it. Sometimes, all you need is a stroke of luck, and for these guys, that was the most important thing. Let me know your thoughts on your favorite story in this video. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.